What's up, D Buzz? What's up, D Bulls? Y'all already know it's your girl back for a not a wig video, but a real talk video. What's up, you guys? So I hope y'all all having like a really great day. It's Wednesday. It's actually really Monday evening, and it's what time is it? Um, let's see. It's 6.50. Girl, I was supposed to do this video like hours and hours ago, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. My eyes were burning. Um, I was really tired. I was really not in the mood. I had a tough Sunday. Like yesterday was really not a good day for me. Like, like serious. It was Sunday. I really tried to, I, I really did try to get my work done yesterday, like edit a video. And I really couldn't get through it. You know, I went to the first thing. It started off cool. It really did start off really, really good. And, you know what I'm saying? I um went to the 99 cents only store yesterday. I haven't been to the 99 cents only store in, like, months, okay? So I did get some video footage of that, of the new stuff. They have some really nice new stuff at the 99 cents only store. Y'all know it's not just 99 cents only. I think they put 99 cents only because everything in there adds with 99 cents. So it could be $2.99. I mean, you, you get some 99 cents stuff, but it's not only 99 cents. I had to figure that out after years. But anyway, so the main purpose of me going there was because, um, I've been buying these same candles from the Dollar Tree for almost two years now since my son passed away. You know, the praying candles, the tall, the tall ones in the glass. And I light two of them every night by his urn and his picture. And I'm pretty sure you guys have seen that in my video. Of, um, I have a spot where their landing is at in my steps to go upstairs. And it has a big... Um, cut out where you can put a big picture where I have my son's picture and also has like, um, you know, just a counter space or whatever you want to call that space where you can put things. So I have his urn and I have like this thing that I made and I also have these two candles. So I've been burning these ever since, you know, he passed away. And, um, it seems like the candles at the Dollar Tree started getting really cheap because they weren't burning properly. You could barely see any flame. They just weren't burning properly. So I have probably went about went through about eight of them that weren't good. And I didn't take them back. I just, you know, I buy a lot of them at a time. So I ended up running out um, on Saturday night. I had my last two and they were down to the end. And I had to use like the ones that weren't that great from the Dollar Tree. So I said, you know what? Sunday I'm going to get up and I'm going to go to the 99 cents only store instead and get these candles. So I went there, I went and bought a bunch. And as I was walking through the store, you know, they play music in the store. And so as I was walking through the store, um, I cannot remember this young lady's name. I'll put it, if I remember, in the subject or in the box. But it was my son Wuzzle's favorite song. And we actually ended up playing this song at his celebrating life ceremony, celebration of life ceremony. And um, it was, I can't remember the name of the song, but it's Three Little Birds, um, Sit on my window, and they told me to um something. Mm, 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 mm. I can I can, I I know the song when I hear it. I know the words. Um, go get your records, go. So you know the song. You guys know the song. So that was his favorite song. That was one of his favorite songs. Next to an old diva goodie, true. Spread my wings. So um, I heard that it, it started playing in the store, and um, I tried to avoid it. It, it started. It started started messing with me mentally, like, you know, not even mentally, but, you know, it started, it just really started messing with me. And, um, of course, you know, I, I tried to fight back the tears. And when I turned around to look at, you know, something else in the store, they had a bin of basketballs and there was one purple and yellow Lakers basketball. And out of all those basketballs, it was one. And my son loved Kobe Bryant. He loved Kobe. If, if if you said anything wrong about Kobe, yo, he would have went off. That that was his team. That was his man. He loved Kobe, and th and from that moment, I I didn't lose it. But I was like, you know, I, I just want to go home now. I want to pay for my stuff, and I'm ready to go home now. So you know what I'm saying? I went home, and um, I went and visited my son Jerron and my three grandsons over there, and um, I came back, and as I was driving home, I just broke down in tears. You know what I mean? And um, I just pulled up in my, my, my driveway, opened my garage, and um, my daughter was like, where you at? You coming back yet? And I, I'm like, I'm here. I'm in the garage. And I um, was on FaceTime. She was like, why, why are you crying? Like, I just had, like, a really bad experience. Not a bad experience, but I just, it was tough. You know what I'm saying? I, like, I miss him. And um, 
And throughout that whole night, I just cried and cried and cried. And um, I had like a really bad emotional breakdown, you know, because I know things, things happen in life that, you know, is unexpected and you can't like help. And like for that, it was hard for me. Like it, it seriously was hard for me last night. Um, I had bad, um, a bad night. My eyes were swollen this morning. And um, I just was asking him, like, why he haven't come see me yet. You know, I want to talk to him. I just need two more minutes. Just please, just like, can I get, just like two minutes. So, you know, I finally went to sleep. And um, I didn't go to sleep till like three something this morning. And um, when I woke up, I had to go and do a Zoom meeting. Um, had to go do a Zoom meeting. And, um... When I did the Zoom meeting, I noticed on my phone I had got a text message from someone mm, that I really didn't. I was I was kind of like, oh, wow, I'm not about to text them back. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got a text message from someone that I really wasn't expecting to get a text message from. also got an email from them. And I, you know what I'm saying, in June, I just didn't even reply to that. And then I got a text message this morning. But, you know what I'm saying, I just left that on red. But, um... So, you know, I just chilled for the rest of the day today. And then I, as I was watching this movie, I was watching Wrath of Man with Jason Statham. And I know y'all probably know who Jason Statham is. But listen, that is one white man that is so handsome to me. Like, I love him. He's sexy. He's like my, my, my movie husband. For real, he's my movie husband. So I'm, I get a phone call from my son Wuzzle's friend, Daylin. I get a phone call from him today. And it was at, let me see. So he calls me today at 3.08 p.m. Okay, and he's like, hey, Ma, um, how are you? You know, what you doing? I said, I ain't doing nothing, you know. He asked me, was I home? And I was like, yeah, I'm home. He said, all right, I'm come over because I got something for you. And I was like, okay. I didn't ask. I just said, okay. Came over him and was his other friend. And unfortunately, I don't know that young man's name. But when they came over, when they came in, they both had shirts with Wuzzle's face on them. And it was like, but they was both different. And when I sat down in the living room, he was like, you know, I wanted to bring this to you today. And I was like, I looked and, um, you know, like I said, I, I kept asking was last night why I can't just get like two minutes with you. I just need like two minutes. I just need two minutes. I just need two minutes or I give my life for him to just be here. You know what I'm saying? But can I just get two minutes for you to come back and see me? So I, um, Dalen gave me what they brought me over and man, it was this. They had a rug made that says Wuzzles, Wuzzle World on it. Yo, I, this is beautiful. Like, this is freaking beautiful. I bust out in tears crying. And I was like, yo, he sent y'all. He sent y'all here. And he was like, you know, I, I was going to come and give this to you another time. But, you know, I decided today to come. And then his friend said, yeah, yesterday when I had got out the shower, I just decided I'm going to put this shirt on. Not yesterday, excuse me. When I got out the shower today, I decided I'm going to put this shirt on. Was a shirt. And um, and it was the shirt that we had made for his celebration of life ceremony with, with him all over. And so he's like, well, I'm going to go to Dalen House. And when he said when he went to Dalen House, Dalen had a shirt on, too. But it wasn't the exact same shirt, but it was a shirt that Wuzzle had made because he had a clothing line. And so they was like, yo, let's go give her this gift. And I just broke down in tears and I just started crying and I was just like, he sent y'all, he sent y'all. And they was like, you know, he always here. He always here. So they stay for a moment. I'm going to put the picture up of them and stuff with the shirts. And they stay for a moment and a few moments. And then, you know, they left. So, you know, I walked them out. And then maybe like two minutes after they left, you know, I was so happy. Like, I was so happy. Two minutes after they left, the doorbell rang. It was Mumsy. She was coming back from the movies. And she was at the door. She was like, Mommy, um, you best to hurry up and um, open the door and make sure you do it really carefully because there is this big, I don't know if it's a bat or a whatever. So it's a window above my door, and it's really high up because I have very high ceilings. You know, I live in a two-story home, and it's, they're very high ceilings. So um, it's this, we have to look it up. It was this big-ass moth. It's a black witch moth. Girl, let me tell you, I had to look it up and see what they were about. So I posted a video and I didn't even really look it up. I just found out it was a black witch moth and they are like seven inches big. That shit was like huge. Okay. So I posted um, a video on shorts and one of my divas here was like, 
her auntie always would say that when you would see those, and they'd be like, by your house or whatever, when her auntie would always say that when you would see those, that's somebody that, you know, passed away that is coming to see you. Then someone else said the same thing. So then I looked it up. Sure enough, it said in Hawaii and other countries, they believe that when a black witch moth comes to your home, that is that that the the moth has embodied someone that has recently died that you love and that person is coming to say goodbye to you. Yo, I kid you not, this was all today. And then yesterday it was the song, it was the basketball, then the the rug. This was all within two days, 24 hours. You my daughter in law was, you know, she's Hispanic and so they have their beliefs too. And she she when she seen the video, she, she was like, um, that's wuzzle. That's wuzzle. That's that's wuzzle right there. And in that and that that form. It made I was sad yesterday, but today I'm happy. I feel good. You know what I'm saying? And um I just you know what I'm saying, I I go through my shit. I've been getting private messages, like, you know, emails or in the comments like, you know, some people are saying like, you know, don't don't stoop to that level where somebody is talking about you on YouTube. Don't stoop to their level. The other people's like, oh, you know, some people are like you acting childish by responding to that person, or you know what I'm saying, or other people are like, you know, you yeah, you know, you dragged or whatever. Like, here's the thing. First of all, can nobody bully me, and can nobody say nothing to me that could ever hurt me. You know what I'm saying? Like, can't nobody bully me? Can nobody hurt me physically, mentally, verbally? Can nobody ever in this world hurt me in any type of way because but one can't none of that shit penetrate me and hurt me because I already hurt from losing my son and can't nobody ever take that place of the hurt that I already feel so when somebody saying like oh you know report that they bullying you like you can't never bully me bully me how you can't bully me hurt my feelings because you're talking about me that shit will never hurt me. You know what I'm saying? I, I find that as like a compliment. You know what I'm saying? When you talk about me or you make a video about me, I find that as a compliment because I already, I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like they say four tough. I'm, I'm built four tough. Like, you know what I'm saying? I've been through it all within 23 months of my life. Okay. Two years would be next month. My son passed away in August 4th. Two years. I have been through, through everything, not even through everything, but it feel like it when you lose your kid, it feel like it. So if you ever feel like, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you doing something to demise me or hurt me or make me feel less than a woman or make me feel less than a person, sweetheart, you will never, ever make me feel that way ever. I lost my child. You know what I'm saying? That's the worst thing anybody could ever go through. Can't nothing you say penetrate me. Can't nothing you do penetrate me. Can't nothing. You know what I'm saying? None of that shit. And yeah, I might come back at you because that's what I'm gonna do. That's sec that's first nature. If you if you if you step to me, that's my reflex. I'ma step to you. But you think I'm gonna keep going back and forth with anybody? I don't give a fuck who it is. Never. You know what I'm saying? Cause I'm I'm above that. I don't have time for the shit. And on top of that, like, you know what I'm saying? My son ain't here. You think I give two fucks about what anybody think about me? I don't give two fucks, not one fuck, zero. I give zero fucks about what anybody think about me. I don't give a fuck if you say I don't have no motherfucking ovaries, all that shit. First of all, I don't give two fucks about that. I give zero fucks about that, okay? Because I've had my children. I got grandkids, you know what I'm saying? fuck you think I care about bleeding for? You know what I'm saying? You think I give a fuck if somebody be like, oh, I'm ratchet or fix my bottom teeth? Let me tell y'all straight up, I give zero fucks about what anybody feel about me. In this world now, I've lived through enough pain that I don't give a fuck about what nobody say. It's sad though that some people will sell their soul to the devil just to get ahead or get recognition. You know what I'm saying? People will sell their soul to the devil just to get recognition or be on a cloud. That shit don't sit well with me and it ain't gonna sit well with God. You only got one person to, to answer to. You ain't gotta answer to me, you ain't gotta answer to YouTube, you ain't even gotta answer to your subscribers. You got one person to answer to. So at the end of the day, in the beginning of the day, in the middle of the motherfucking day, I give zero fucks about what anybody think about me. You can unsubscribe, you can unfollow, but at the end of every fucking day, just know this, we all human beings, okay? We all human beings. And what you may not go through, somebody else may go through. And what you may reap, you will definitely sow. And what you do, karma comes around, and it always come back around. So with that being said, 
ain't nobody bullying me on here, so I'm gonna need y'all to stop saying that's a form of bullying because can't nobody bully me. You know what I'm saying? Listen, let me tell y'all this much. All my life as a kid, not even all my life, but enough of my life, my childhood, middle school, junior high school, whatever y'all want to call it, I got bullied. You know what I'm saying? He got girls and boys in school talking about, oh, Pissy Yellow, he got those freckles on her face. Look at that. You know what I'm saying? Look at that. She got four stripes instead of three on her sneakers. Okay, we get that. My mama might not have had much money when I was growing up. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I went hard for what I had and what I want in life. You know what I'm saying? So I already got bullied as a kid. You know what I'm saying? And them same people that was bullying me, every time they see me in New York City, they want to be my friends now. And what do I do? <laughs> Dust them off, put on my shades, and keep pushing. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm a grown-ass woman. I'm 47 years old, and I'm glad to have made it this far and look this young and hella good, okay? So, whoever want to try to bully me and talk down on me, sweetie, you can't penetrate this, Okay? Four tough bitches. And on that note, we're going to get into this real talk, okay? Huh? 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 What? Damn. Damn. All right. I know I normally would do like a promo in a real talk, but you know, I feel like I took enough of you guys' time up in this video. I didn't even realize I was talking 20 minutes, but you know, I just yeah, I will yapper on and yapper on, girl. So we just gonna jump right into this real talk. Y'all already know the rules. I will post my email in this video so that way y'all can um, send me your real talk questionnaires or, you know, for advice if you want to. But we just gonna jump right into this. Now, I'm trying to see, did she even name herself? Well, she, I don't see it so far, so maybe, you know, oh, she did. She didn't. Well, you know what? I will name her at the very end. And it's funny because she starts the email like me. Cause Well, not all my emails. I'd be like, hey, love. So she wrote, hello, love. Hello, love. So tell me if I'm wrong or out of line, but I don't want to live with my boyfriend. So I'm pregnant 16 weeks, and I need to move out of my apartment because it's too small for a baby. Plus, I work from home. Well, originally, it was just supposed to be me and my boyfriend looking for a place for our small family. But then my boyfriend mentioned he does not want to leave his dog at his brother's. I don't mind, but it's hard to find a place that accepts pit bulls. So once I found a two bedroom and two bathroom that accepts pit, bull, pit bulls, my boyfriend mentions, I don't want to leave my brother behind, so he's going to have to stay with us. I kind of got upset because I was struggling to find a place that accepts his one pit bull. Now I need to find a place that accepts two pit bulls and me, him and his brother, who's 25 and on unemployment since last year. His brother, for some reason, is sticking to unemployment and not looking for a job, which didn't bother me until now, since he has to live with us. I told my boyfriend that is putting too much pressure on me and it's hard and he's saying we can find a place it wouldn't be that hard trust me babe i don't want him i don't want my brother living on the street i told him technically he wouldn't because he has so much family that he would that they would take him in or the friends he invites over mentioned that they don't mind living at the house but i guess that's not an option at this point i am looking for a place for me and our baby I feel bad because my boyfriend states he wants to be there for our first child and wake up with me and my son, but this is too much. Plus, him and his brother smoke weed all the time in the house, and I honestly don't want my newborn around that environment or smell. How should I express to my boyfriend that I don't want to live with him and his two grown pit bulls? One of them always pees and poops around the house still, and I don't want to live with his brother. Please help me, or I, or am I being too harsh? So we're gonna call her, we're gonna just call her Veronica, because that's the first name that popped up in my head, okay? So Veronica is 16 weeks pregnant, okay? So, wait, that's four months pregnant. So she like, you know, that's, that, that's almost half. She's 16 weeks pregnant, looking for a place. She found a place that accepts her boyfriend, her boyfriend's full-grown pit bull, and herself, she found a two bedroom, two bathroom that accepts pit bulls. So she got one pit bull, a boyfriend, and the baby on the way. Now, she 
has to try and find another apartment that accepts two pit bulls and three adults and a baby because her boyfriend doesn't want to let his brother leave his brother behind. She says she's just gonna look for an apartment for her and a baby. So that's one bad. That's one bedroom you already need. You know what I'm saying? She's just she. She said that she's being too hard. She don't want to live with her boyfriend and her boyfriend's brother and them two pit bulls because for one, her boyfriend and his brother smoke weed all the time, all day long. Her boyfriend's brother don't got no job. He on unemployment. And one of them pit bulls pee and shit all day long. Okay. First of all, hey, why when I said pit bull, here come my dog Pancake walking in. Like, did you? Talk you talking about a dog? So, first of all, Veronica, you know, let me let me just say this. Um, I don't think you're being too harsh because you're just bringing a brand new life into the world. Now, for one, you know, who the hell want to smell weed all day long in their house? Like, you know, weed have a very strong smell. So do cigarettes, too. But weed have a very strong smell. They both do. Either way, it's not really, like, healthy for a brand new baby to be in the environment of weed smoke. Regardless if one of them was to say, well, I could just go smoke in my bedroom or I could smoke in the bathroom. There's vents. It's going to go through the house, okay? And not only that, but we got two grown pit bull dogs. Okay, one of them that pees and poops all throughout the house still, like, let me say this, okay, I'm gonna just say this. My dog, you know, Pancake is a Karen Terrier. She's a little Toto dog from the from, from the Wizard of Oz, okay? And I was about to say from the Walking Dead. Um, <laughs> she's a little Toto dog from the Wizard of Oz. And she be having accidents too. Do you think I like her accents? Hell to the no, okay? It's one thing when you have carpeting, and it's one thing when you don't. But either way, nobody wants to clean up shit and piss from no damn big-ass dog every fucking day. Now they want to clean a baby's ass and a dog after a dog. I think, like, Veronica might be on the right path. She wants to just now find a place for her and her baby. And her boyfriend can come over and visit the child. And I can understand what she feels, and I can understand how she feels, because it's a, kind of like an invasion of privacy. And then I can understand, yo, that's my brother. I don't want to leave him behind. I understand that, too. But, Veronica, maybe your boyfriend and you need to have a really, really serious talk, because it's nice that you have a family mode going on, a family environment for your baby. You know what I'm saying? You got the daddy and the mommy and the baby there. That's a beautiful thing. That's always a beautiful thing. Because when you have a baby, when you just have a baby, it's so hard. You know what I'm saying? Mommy duties are hard, okay? You know what I'm saying? You need help cleaning, cooking. You got the baby that's awake a lot. So it's hard to go through, you know, especially when it's your first baby. You need help. It's You know what I'm saying? You go through things. You just had a baby. You're tired. The baby's keeping you. So it's always nice to have, like, that extra helping hand there. Even if it ain't your baby daddy or your husband, even if it's a roommate or a friend, I know that any woman that just had a baby needs help, okay? Babies are a lot of work. Boyfriend, he really needs to allow his brother, who's 25 years old, to grow up. He's 25 years old, honey. He don't need for y'all to bring him along like he's one of the children. Or y'all, or he's like one of the little pit bulls. He needs to go out and venture out and find his own way. He's 25 years old. That unemployment, honey, ain't gonna last forever. That shit gonna run the bug out, girl. It's gonna run out. I see every state is opening back up. All these different states are opening back up. This is Arizona. Unemployment is done out here. You know what I'm saying? People have to go back to work. This is the reality. This unemployment is not going to last forever. And what's he going to do when there's no unemployment? He going to live with somebody else and be laid up on the couch, not bringing in any type of income? No, girl. He going to have to find his way. He 25. He grown. Sometimes it seems like sometimes men, it just be so hard for them to grow up. You know what I'm saying? That You know that saying, they like men mature later, later than women. And that might be true, but then that's not true because there are some grown ass, old ass women that I have seen girl that just don't know how to grow the fuck up. They do the most treacherous shit, always want attention, do anything for attention. Like I said, will sell their soul to the devil just for a little bit of clout, okay? And it's a shame. But I think it's kind of like 50-50. Men and women 
don't mature. Some of them don't. And, you know, when you keep carrying a person on your shoulder, you keep carrying them on your back, They, you're not giving them an opportunity to grow up. You know what I mean? Your boyfriend is not giving his brother an opportunity to grow up. I get it. That's his family. But sometimes family can be our worst enemies. And, and that's unfortunate to say, but Family can definitely sometimes be our worst enemies, and sometimes our own selves can be our worst enemies. You know what I'm saying? And I just feel like this is the time now for your brother, your your boyfriend, to let his brother know, man, I got a family that I gotta raise. I got a kid on the way. Ain't no more fun time smoking weed all day. You know what I'm saying? I got a family I gotta provide for, and I think it's time that you provide for yourself. Your boyfriend, you need to have a real serious talk with him, sweetheart, because we all gotta grow up sometimes. Shit, I mean, like, listen, if I could live at home with my mama and not have to pay no bills and do nothing, don't you think I would? Don't you think that if anybody could get a free ride in life and not have to do nothing, they would? Like, let's be let's be on the real shit. You know what I'm saying? If people could get a free ride in life and not have to do anything, work, pay bills, and then I guarantee you, people will take that free ride and continue to lay their ass up on the couch and be lazy. That's just what the fuck they will do. But there is come a time when we're going to have to grow up. Either you're going to fin for yourself, you're either going to sink or you're going to swim, baby. you either going to sink or swim. You know what I'm saying? And he's going to either have to swim or his ass going to drown in the motherfucking waters. And so that's what you need to talk to him about. If you still on the fence and you still want to move out on your own, then I respect that. And no, I definitely don't think you're being too harsh, but I feel like your boyfriend, he got to be a little bit more lenient on his brother. If that's your, here, here's a bet. Here's a good, this is a good example. If he love his brother and he want to see his brother do good and be about that life and have something, then he need to stop being a crutch for his brother. You know what I mean? Because all he's doing is being a crutch for his brother. That's all he's being. And if he want to allow his brother to grow and have his own, then he, what he need to do is walk away and let him do that. As long as you're an enabler, Man, that person's gonna, this person's just gonna sit back and chill. As long as you allow that person to take over your life, chill, relax, and do nothing with their time, that's exactly what they're going to do. Your boyfriend is being an enabler to his brother. Because what's gonna happen to your boyfriend's brother if your boyfriend ain't around? Like, I mean, on, on a really serious note, what will happen to him? You know what I'm saying? It's time to fend for himself now. Y'all got a family to raise. Y'all have a child. What? You know, there's nothing wrong with other kin's kinship living with you, you know, other family members living with you. But when it is stagnating you and the relationship, then that's when it's time to let go, okay? It's, it's just time to let go. You know, sometimes we got to pull the nipple out their mouth and let them go. We got to cut the strings, cord, okay? And smoking weed all day, Maybe you need to talk to your boyfriend about that too because we cost money. And that amount of money can go towards a savings account for y'all, for the family, for the baby. It can go towards nice furniture, nice things, baby stuff, whatever. And I'm saying that you don't have nice furniture, but it, new stuff is always appreciated. You know what I'm saying? It's always nice to have a savings account. It's always nice to have some money in the bank. And wasting it on, on weed all the time is not cool. And smoking weed every day all the time is not cool, too. We're going to burn these brain cells, girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't saying nothing's wrong with smoking weed because y'all know I like to hit the blunt, too. You know what I'm saying? But I don't smoke every day, and I damn sure ain't smoking all day. I, that shit make you tired and lazy. Like, yeah, I can't smoke all day. Uh, if I smoke weed, and when I do smoke weed, that shit is in the evening. Because, girl, I can't be lethargic all day and not want to do anything all day long. Oh, I would be so mad with myself if I didn't get work done. So I'm just saying. Have a talk with him, Veronica. Because it's not that you're being harsh, but... Did he ever think about he might be being a little bit too harsh? Now you having a baby and he's putting all this on you. Did he ever stop to think like, well, I didn't ask Veronica how she feel about him and two dogs. He never asked you how you felt about that. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of being selfish. That's kind of being selfish. So that's what you need to talk to him about. Hey, you never asked my opinion how I felt about me, your brother, and the two dogs and a baby. And, and you in the household. You never asked me my feelings on that. 
This is our family. Not saying that your brother is not our family, but this is our immediate little family right here. And I'm trying to make a new start in life with you and our baby and maybe even our dog. And I hope and pray to God that the dog that's pissing and shitting all the time is not the one that belongs to your boyfriend that you want to take along. Because, honey, if it is, you might want to learn and start to train that motherfucker now. Okay? And just be careful because, you know... I would hope that it's not a vicious pit bull. Any dog could be vicious. Look, my little pancake, she'd be vicious too. You come too close to me out in public, she will snarl and bite and try to bite at you. That's that's her. She don't play that shit when you come too close to her mother. Okay? But, Veronica, I really feel like you need to have a good sit-down talk with your man. You know, you can still look for a place for just you and the baby. He can even, you know, maybe he want to come in later on. But you need to let him know, need to ask him what's his feelings. Are. You need to let him know what your feelings are and let him know how you feel, that he didn't ask you how you feel about bringing your your brother-in-law and a new another dog into a new home. You already live in there with two dogs. I can only imagine. Sweet and dog shit and piss, the smell of that. Girl, don't nobody want to smell that shit all day, okay? And he's not taking you into any type of consideration. You pregnant. This is like your most, you know, vulnerable, stressful time. You're supposed to be happy, glowing while you're pregnant. Not be irritated, okay? Straight up. Talk to him. And if he still want to bring brother along, then honey, you need to do what's best for you and your baby. And that's what it is. And on that note, you guys, let Veronica know what y'all think. I'm going to go. I'm going to go edit this video. Girl, I've been watching P-Valley on Stars. I just started watching it two days ago. Have y'all ever watched P-Valley? I really, really do like this show. I'm addicted. But I'm very, I'm a little confused as to what Autumn, you know, the stripper Autumn, light skin girl, where is she getting all this money from? It, 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 it's not from the strip club, right? That she's trying to, you know, send to different places. Can somebody please explain to me? Like, you can email it to me, believe it in the comments. Where is she getting all this money from? Because I'm not seeing her really doing too much, but dancing. And why is she wanting to send it? Where is she sending it to? And how is her husband that's looking for her able to see all these transactions? Can somebody help me out, please? Did I miss something or what? But you know, P Valley, Pussy Valley. I like the show. I really do. Girl, I be trying to find new shit to watch all the time. And so this is um, a good show. If you guys have any suggestions, because I'm on episode six, okay? You know, there's only like so many episodes. Then let me know. What I am going to do is I'm going to go watch Ghost because I didn't even, I watched up to like three or four episodes of Ghost and I just couldn't get into it. It was Mary J. Blige. I just don't really care for her acting skills. She just seemed like she was trying too hard. Her emotions behind it was just off. And so I was like, I can't watch this. I can't watch this. And Raising Cain is, it just came on. So I watched that, you know, it's only one episode. So I'm not in like a huge rush to watch that now because I got to watch Ghost. And from what I was told from my son, the real ghost probably ain't even dead. So I'm just saying, somebody catch a girl up. But leave your comments below. I love y'all all. I got to go. You know, I hope you guys have a great evening, afternoon, morning, whenever y'all are watching this video. I love you. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Happy, happy Wednesday. Real talk. Bye.